In the last video, we defined or we constructed the solutions to uh, the time-independent Schrodinger equation describing the scattering process, uh, which we labeled as the stationary scattering states, uh, which we argued had to take on the following form. So it has uh, some incident free particles and uh, some scattered free particles that are, uh, in the case where we're very far away from the interaction potential. The central quantity in the stationary scattering states is this F sub K of theta phi, which we call the scattering amplitude. This tells us something about uh, how the particles are scattered in uh, different directions, quantified by the azimuthal angle theta and the polar angle phi. The importance of this quantity is uh, due to the fact that it's related to the differential scattering section, which we call delta sigma of theta and phi. Uh, this we had defined as the ratio of the number of particles scattered per unit time over a given solid angle, which we have called the omega, over the flux of incident particles. And we have written this as d and dt for the number of particles per unit time over a certain solid angle. All that over the flux of incident particles. The flux of incident particles here is the number of particles per unit area per unit time. A measure of this uh, incident flux is given by uh, the probability current. This is a quantity that uh, one way of defining it is as h bar over the mass. In this case, we're working with the reduced mass times the imaginary component of the complex conjugate of the incident wave function. So this e to the i kz times the gradient of this incident wave function. This can also be written Uh, in terms of the nabla instead of the gradient. For uh, the incident wave, we said that this went as e to the i kz, as a plane wave propagating in the z direction. So if you calculate the probability current for this type of wave function, you get that this is equal to h bar k over the reduced mass in the set direction. And this tells you something about the flux of probability in a given direction. So this means that ji, which is the magnitude of this vector, is equal to h bar k over mu. For the numerator, so for the scattered particles. So the situation we have is we have some incident particles. We have our target, which has some range A. And we're interested in quantifying the number of particles that gets scattered in a particular direction given by theta and phi to some uh, area element, some distance uh, r away. So 
So in this case, the number of particles per unit time that pass through this area element over here, that is also given by uh, a flux of scatter particles. So we'll use a subscript S times the size of this area element. In this case, uh, the probability current or the, the flux of, uh, of the scattered waves is given by the equivalent expression that we have before, but this time in terms of the scattered wave function times the gradient of this scattered wave function. In general, this quantity has uh, components along R. So this is the R component. A component along uh, theta, along the azimuthal angle. And the component along the polar angle phi. If you uh, calculate all of these quantities, you'll find that uh, the angular components of this probability current are much, much smaller than the radial component for the case where we're very far away from the potential. So for the case where we know the form of the scattered wave function. So we really only need to calculate then the radial component, which by definition is in the R hat direction. This is equal to H bar K over mu times the square modulus of the probability amplitude over R squared in the R hat direction. This means then that if we go back to the number of particles per uh, scattered per unit time, we said that this went like the probability current times or dotted with the area element that we're looking at. This was composed of mostly the radial component, so it's approximately equal to times uh, the vector area element. The area element was also in the R hat direction as shown over here. So this is in the R hat direction. So when you take the dot product between the probability current and the vector area element, you get this r dot r times the actual size or the, the magnitude of the area element. This is equal to one. And we can express this area element in terms of the solid angle. So This is the value of the radial component of the probability current for the scattered wave. And the area element is given by R squared D omega. And there's another R squared over here in the, uh, the probability current. These cancel out so that you're left with So the number of particles scattered per unit time is given by this quantity over here. 
putting all this back together into our expression for the differential cross section. We had said that this was dn dt over d omega, so the number of scattered particles per unit time for a given solid angle over the flux of incident particles. The numerator simplifies down to just the magnitude of the radial component of the, of the scattered probability current. And the magnitude of the probability current for the incident particles. This is equal to the square modulus of the probability of the scattering amplitude. Okay, so this uh, essentially this fudge factor that we said was necessary to describe the fact that scatter particles don't scatter isotropically. This is actually uh, quantifying the differential cross section that we had to find as the proportionality constant between the number of scattered particles per unit time and the incident flux of particles. This means then that the total scattering cross section, which we said was the uh, adding up all of the contributions of the differential scattering section over all solid angles. This is uh, given by this equivalent integral. Okay, so by the integral of the scattering amplitude, the square modulus of the scattering amplitude square over all solid angles. So what this means then is if we can determine what the scattering amplitude is, we can estimate the differential scattering section and the total scattering cross section, and thereby estimating the number of particles scattered in a given direction. In the next video, we'll begin looking at uh, a method where we can estimate this quantity for the case of uh, a spherically symmetric potential, so for a, a central potential. Uh, this method is known as the method of partial waves.